Hey guys, it's Crystal. I recently covered the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro camera system, but alongside that comes iOS 18. It's been officially out for a bit now, so whether you're thinking of updating and you haven't, or you just dove into it, I thought it'd be cool to just take a look at what I've been enjoying with iOS 18. So let's jump into it. Let's start with customization because iOS 18 definitely dives deeper into making your phone feel more you. One of my favorite software updates of all time was just the ability to have a wallpaper rotation where you long press and you can cycle through all your different wallpaper looks. Also the ability to change the clock style. And this isn't new, but it is something that I've just very thoroughly enjoyed. But now you can go a step further with this and customize your lock screen controls. So in this wallpaper here, if you go to customize lock screen, usually it's flashlight and camera on the bottom, but you can swap these out for whatever you want. And there is a very long list of things that you can add to here. I think one of my favorite things I have been adding to my lock screen is the voice memo. There we go. So I could just add a voice memo here and also just open app. So now we have that ready to go. And if you long press on that control, it'll just open up YouTube right away. Apart from that, when it comes to wallpaper customization, everything is pretty similar to what we're used to. You can cycle through your different looks here, add widgets. Another bonus little thing is a clock. We now have this rainbow option, which looks really cool. I think it looks really cool when you have like either a blue background or a black and white with that rainbow clock, it makes it stand out beautifully. The customization does not stop there though. Once we go into our home screen, we can now customize the look of our app icons. If you long press, go to edit on the top left, customize, and now we have all these different options, light, dark, automatic, that will change depending on the time of day, and tinted is the big new thing here. So we can go through all of our different colors and select the color that way, make it lighter or darker, or we could just color pick to match the background a little more. I'm gonna color pick on this orange part here. Maybe make it a little lighter so it could pop a little more. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good with this wallpaper, but a lot of times I feel like the tinted look doesn't really match the vibe that I'm going for. I wish we could go a step further and maybe be able to change the background of the apps or just like the photo altogether to whatever we would like. And there is a way to do this through the shortcuts app, but then there is a delay because it'll open up shortcuts and then open up the app. So we can skip that all together and just be able to customize these more to our look. That'd be awesome. Another little bonus with the app icons is that you can make them larger now and that'll remove the text. And I do really love the look of this. It's very clean, very minimal. Again, I do wish we could go a step further and truly set the size of the icons to whatever we would like, but this is a really clean look, so I'm gonna leave it just like that. Boom, there we go. We have a very fall theme going on. With iOS 18, another thing you can customize is your control center, which just makes your phone easier to use. And again, more you. If you long press on here, you can move these controls around in that visible grid wherever you would like. You can also resize them. So if you want this QR scanner to be a square, we can move this up here if that's something we use a lot, or you can get rid of it altogether and just put whatever controls you would like on here. Again, the list is so long. There's so much you can add. With the new control center, it also categorizes them into different pages. So you can just swipe through for easy access to certain controls. You can also add even more pages. So let's say you want all of the capture controls in one page. We can just put all of these here. And now we have a page dedicated to everything with the camera right there. Apple intelligence in its full glory is still to come, but a great new feature you can start using today are writing tools. This can suggest and rewrite messages for you or any text throughout your apps, whether it's notes or email, whether you want it written in a friendlier manner or more professional, it instantly rewrites a suggested form of what you wrote. You can also use writing tools to summarize longer forms of text in any format you like, 
which makes note-taking on the go even easier. iOS 18 also delivers some useful tools in Safari. If you select this icon down here, left of the search bar, you can jump into some of these new features like the new reader, which will neatly put together all the key bodies of text in any article you're reading online. You can also customize the reader by changing the font or background color to be easier on your eyes if you're gonna be scrolling online for a while. Now, what I really love within here is that you can also hide distracting items, which does a really cool disappearing animation of anything you select to clean up the page a little more and get rid of those unwanted ads or any other items in the way of your reading. As much as I enjoy all of the customization, probably one of my favorite new updates with iOS 18 is in messages, specifically the text animations that you can do now, which just lets you express yourself even more. There's a new little icon on your keyboard here that not only lets you bold, italicize, underline, or strike through text, it also lets you animate it, which really gets your message across. You can add this to your whole message, but I kind of enjoy just doing it to one specific word. Another great update within messages is the new emoji tap backs. They got a new look for the ones that we are used to using, which is heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, haha, -ha, exclamation, or emphasize, and question mark. They look a little more bubbly and cuter now, in my opinion. But beyond that, you can also tap back with any emoji in the entire emoji library, which again, better ways to express ourselves even more through text. A lot of the times the tap back doesn't really make sense, so we don't use it, but now, you can tap back with anything. Now, another feature that I honestly haven't gotten enough use out of yet is the ability to schedule your messages or send later. If you tap your plus icon here, there's now a send later option that lets you write out a message and send it whenever you would like, exact time and date. The cutoff is two weeks from today, so you can schedule messages up to two weeks from now. And yeah, this is gonna be very handy because there's so many times where I'll write out a message and I say I'm gonna get back to it and then I never do and I end up forgetting. But now you can just organize yourself with messages even more and treat it almost like you would with email where you can schedule emails for later. You can now do it with your messages. Let's also check out Siri because if you've downloaded 18.1, you can opt in to start using some of the new Apple intelligence features, which includes the all new Siri. And this new look alone is just so nice. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but the colors splash all over the edges beautifully. Now, some of the biggest new changes with Siri, including chat GPT integration is still yet to come in a future update. But so far I can already tell just how much more aware contextually and conversationally Siri is. One of the more useful updates with Siri, in my opinion, is the ability to type to Siri. There's so many times where I just don't feel like saying it out loud. It's very useful in many scenarios to just type your question or command, and you can access this by double tapping on the bottom of the screen and instantly just start typing away. Now, one of the biggest new changes to iOS 18 is the new Photos app, and there's been a lot of controversy with this one because it definitely feels a bit different. And after using it for a few weeks, it does take a minute to get used to and learn how to navigate your way around it. It is a little clunkier in a way, but there are certain things that I like about it when it comes to organizing things. Like you can now hide your screenshots, which is really nice to clean up your photos. A lot of times the screenshots are just unnecessarily there, so it's easier to honestly get rid of them. I would say the best way to get used to this new photos experience is again, diving in and customizing. We do have the option to rearrange everything in the order that you would like it to be seen. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of your photos, go to customize and reorder, you can select what you would like to be featured. If you have no use for wallpaper suggestions or featured photos, you can turn those off like I did, move them to the bottom and just kind of rearrange everything in the order that you would get used to seeing it. And that kind of helps navigating around a little more. Another great feature with photo editing, thanks to Apple intelligence is cleanup. Oh, how I love this feature. And yes, you could do this before with other apps, but it's so nice to have it integrated straight into the photos app while you're photo editing. When you go into cleanup, it'll automatically suggest what to remove with this beautiful animation over the highlighted areas. You can do this manually by dragging, tapping, or selecting over any area, but the suggestions are pretty spot on and do an incredible job at cleaning up the photo. It isn't always perfect, but 
but most of the time it does the job just fine. With cleanup, you can also select faces to sensor. Whenever you draw a circle over a face, it'll apply a safety filter, which pixelates the face, super handy to use when you need it. And again, it isn't always perfect. I'm sure cleanup will get better with future updates, but if you're finding yourself needing to tweak more of that area or fix more of the image, you just select or tap whatever else needs fixing and it does a pretty good job. Let's also talk about the new calculator experience on iOS 18. We now have history, so whatever math equation you input, it'll remember it and you can delete it, keep it, but I feel like the cool new thing here is math notes. So you can write out equations, which honestly is really handy if you're trying to maybe calculate the tip at a restaurant. You can just write that out and it'll just do the math for you instantly. Another bonus tip here is to long press any of the numbers in the equation that you just wrote out and you can tweak it and have that number changed by sliding left and right with the slider that pops up. And it's so cool that it also matches your natural handwriting style when you do this. So there's a quick overview of iOS 18 and everything I've been enjoying. And I always say this, but updating your software really does make your phone feel brand new. As cool as it is to get the new phone, updating is half the fun of it and a good way to breathe life into the device that you already have. Let me know in the comments if you've been on iOS 18, what's your favorite feature? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hasta luego.